on this episode, how do I measure engagement? Welcome to season seven of Podcraft, and this is the frequently asked question season. See, we get questions every single day via the website, social media, all sorts of different places. We thought it was about time we go through as many of them as we can. I'm Colin Gray, I'm joined by Matthew McLean, and I'm looking forward to hearing what you're asking. Take it away, Matthew. So this question came in from Linda, who was asking, how does she measure engagement with her podcast? And I guess that the first question that comes up here from our point of view is, uh, why might you want to measure your engagement, Colin? I, to see how well you're doing, I guess. <laughs> now, there's a bunch of reasons, isn't there? Uh, I mean, you want to you want to be able to judge whether the time you're putting into a show is worthwhile. You want to be able to judge what's working, what isn't. That's probably one of the big ones for me. It's like being able to test, um, was this episode worked well? This episode didn't work so well. So maybe the audience wants more of this and less of that. Um, and then obviously you get to the number stuff, which is if you want to try and monetize the show, you need to be able to tell your sponsors how well you're doing. An obvious first impression is is that you could measure how well you're doing by download numbers, but of course that's very specific to your niche or topic, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's a bunch of ways that you can measure it, isn't there? Like, they're always a good base, aren't they? The download numbers. You've got listeners. You've got. Um, I mean, it gives you an idea of how many people are currently subscribe to your show, currently finding it on the web, but it's also mixed in. Um, you can find decent stats out there, of course, like go to Blueberry, Libsyn, whoever, and they can sort of narrow it down to where people are listening. So you can get an idea really between, you know, casual visitors and subscribers. But uh, I mean, the other ways of measuring, I think, are much more important, which is kind of engagement with your audience, isn't it? It's actual actual interactions with your audience, I should say. Yeah, getting getting emails and getting comments on social media. These are things as well that are really difficult uh, when you start out and a lot of people get disillusioned because they've been podcasting for a certain amount of time and, and they've just been hit by a wall of silence. It could, yeah. be, uh, <laughs> it could be quite difficult, but it's, it's great when you, you get those first couple of comments in. And again, like even, you know, I know a lot of experienced podcasters out there who get big numbers and have been doing it a long time and you know, they're not snowed under with, with emails and things yeah, like that. Yeah. It's still, it, it's, it takes a bit of effort for someone to yeah. actually sit down and write you an email, doesn't you, it? You have to push it as well. I mean, a lot of people don't ask, do they? Like people ask for reviews and ratings and stuff like that, but they don't tend to ask so much for send me an email or send me a tweet. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, it's hard to convert folks sometimes from, you know, listening to a show out and about or maybe in the gym or something like that into engagement. So um, I think that's why that's even a that's such a valuable measure of engagement, though, isn't it? If somebody does make the effort to go and tweet you or to email you, then it's so much more. Well, <laughs> it's obviously much more effort than downloading the show, since there's probably twenty shows in my podcast feed right now which I download every single episode of automatically and never listen to. So they're getting my numbers, but actually no engagement. A lot of people as well miss a trick when uh, people get in touch with them because, like you say, the, these people are really engaged with what you're doing. And I think a lot of people are maybe guilty of just saying, oh, thanks very much for getting in touch and leaving it there. But there's an opportunity there to, to build a relationship with that person, isn't there? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, you want to find these people that are fanatical fans. They're the ones that are going to refer you to other people. Um, I mean, what what do you ask? Would you ask for social media mentions? Do you ask for emails? What do you do on uh, on your shows? Uh, usually, always just say to get in touch, give the the email address, and you know maybe maybe I could be a bit more tactful about it and and ask somebody to get in touch about something, you know, rather than just leave it wide open. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. And I I think when we've done that in the past, we've tended to get more responses rather yeah. than you know just asking for an email. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that's yeah. It, being specific about it, isn't it? It's giving them an actual task. Maybe someone with a bit of an outcome as well, like say get in touch uh, about. Um, like what? what's your favourite so your subject what's your favourite audio drama and we'll list them all out on the next episode so it gives people a real purpose to it as opposed to just kind of generally get in touch let us know what you think 
And I, th- I think you do you do tend to get more responses when you've asked, like if, if we've had a discussion about something, um, I wouldn't call it a debate, but we've been debating certain points, you know, what, what do you think of this, what do you think of that? It's not just a, an interview maybe. And uh, we'll ask for the, the listener's opinion and we do tend to get a lot of emails in when, when we go down that route. Yeah. Um, and social media comments as well, you know, Facebook comments, Twitter comments, just whatever whatever social media that you're on as a podcaster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about, um, so yeah, there, there's obviously those kind of contact methods, isn't there? Social media, great way to measure engagement. So number of tweets, number of Instagram follows, all this kind of stuff. Like you can set yourself targets through what you want to achieve via the podcast. And you can track that kind of thing through um, a tool like Pretty Link. So Pretty Link is something that I use, we use all the time for measuring engagement because we'll give out a particular link on the show Say it's um, go to this form and give us some feedback on this season, what you want to see in the next season. You'll give it a particular link. Maybe it's uh, thepodcasthost.com forward slash season three feedback or something like that. Maybe simpler than that, to be honest. But you can measure the number of accesses through that particular link. So that's really around, the, I suppose, your call to action on the show. Like you're given a call to action at the end and you can measure how many people really take action on that. Um, so that might not even be feedback. It might actually be going pick up a, a lead magnet or a resource list or, you know, a checklist based on what you were talking about. So if you can give them a bit of incentive, then you can measure how many people are actually taking action on that. And that's kind of, I mean, that's really valuable stuff for sponsors as well. So the download numbers, all that kind of stuff, that's obviously kind of the standard. But see if you can boost your, I mean, if you can prove the amount of engagement you get, the amount of action your audience takes, if you can say on every episode, we only have a thousand listeners, but we have 50 people every single time go and click on our uh, on our link, go and get the resource list, that kind of stuff. That shows a lot of action from your audience and you can justify higher costs, higher sponsorship money because of that as well. So it's looking beyond just simple contact and actually try to track people uh, taking action on your requests, I suppose. Yeah, not to not to repeat what you've just said, but it just made me think that uh, well, Libsyn, one of the the big podcast media hosts, uh, because they they're able to pair you up with advertisers when your show reaches a, a certain number of downloads. I think it's five thousand US downloads yeah. um, within a, a month of your episode going out. But what Libsyn will do to set you up there is is get you get your listeners to fill out a survey, and they ask that you only mention that survey at the end of your episode as your call to action, and not post it on Facebook, etc. Even if it's mm. a group dedicated to your podcast listeners, yeah. because what they want to know. And, you know, what advertisers are, are wanting to know is that you're saying something at the end of your podcast and listeners are doing what you've asked. Yeah, and that's yeah. you know, that's absolute proof of engagement. Yeah. And if you're maybe deceiving advertisers or if you have big download numbers but you don't have any engagement, it will soon be found out when nobody's clicking through to, to the things that have been advertised. So yeah, yeah. Uh, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like I said... The- Download number, it's a, it's a problem in the podcast industry right now that a lot of people are trying to solve is that download numbers that we can measure are completely flawed because they don't show how long someone listened to a show. They don't show if anybody listened at all. I mean, like I say, I've got 30 shows subscribed to my phone and they all download every single episode and I listen to a fraction of them. So it's just flawed. But I think it's something that there's some good companies working on it. There's some good solutions looking like they're developing out there. We might soon get much more detailed stats on you know when people listened when people fast forwarded you know the bits that people dropped out on i think that'd be so useful once we've got those kind of stats when we can see you know 10 minutes into this show 60 percent of the audience dropped off why was that you go and look at it and it helps you improve your show based on that so but right now yeah we've got work with what we've got we've got our download numbers we've got our engagement through social emails and then we can try and measure our calls to action as well that's the question for this week 
Thanks again for listening. Thanks again for spending some time with us. I just want to say as well, during the course of this season, we're actually launching our new community, which is called Fan Fishing. It's all about creating new fans for your podcast, really engaging with people, figuring out all the questions around podcasting, helping you to create a more engaging podcast and get it out every single week. So if you want to check out what we're doing there over at that community, um, from support to courses to live sessions to, to university style teaching, then go over to podhost.me forward slash fans and you'll see the community there. So I hope to see you there. Please do check it out. And either way, we'll see you on the next one where we'll be answering another one of your questions. Of course, send them in as well. Send in any questions you have to info at thepodcasthost.com. We'll hopefully answer it soon. See you next time.